Now that we know how to graph linear equations and functions um, in our standard form, slope intercept form, let's talk about transformations. And a lot of the graphs that we actually graphed um, in the y equals mx plus b format are actually transformations of um, what's called a, a parent function. So let's define some words and then let's talk about the transformations that we've actually been seeing. So what is a family of functions? It's a group of functions with similar characteristics. So what does that mean? That means, for example, we're looking specifically today at linear functions. So all of these graphs are going to be non-vertical slanted lines. Right? So they'll share something or they'll all be eventually when we do um, transformations of quadratics, they'll all look like u's. And the next lesson we're going to do transformations of absolute value functions, which we're going to see are going to be v-shaped. So they're all going to share some kind of similar trait. Now the parent function is the most basic function um, in a family of function. So that means it's the simplest equation that can be made or that can be written in that family. So for example, R's that we're looking at today are those non-vertical slanted lines. So the simplest way you can write that would be Y equals X. And that is the parent function that we'll be looking at um, in our work today. So transformations are what we do to a parent function. And it's something that changes the size, shape, position, or orientation of a graph. Okay, so we're going to move our graphs around. We're going to move them up, down, left, right. We can make it smaller. We can make it bigger. We can flip it around. And those are all different transformations. We're going to look at each transformation separately first, and then we're going to combine them together at the end. And again, this lesson, we're only looking at lines. And some of these transformations will actually be a little bit easier to see when we actually don't look at lines. So um, we'll see that in the next lesson. Okay. So the first thing we're going to look at is what's called a translation. So a translation is something that shifts the graph either horizontally or vertically. So you're moving up or down. But it doesn't change the size, shape, or orientation. So again, this translation, we're just moving up, down, left, right. So we're not going to turn it. We're not going to flip it. We're not going to shrink it. We're not going to stretch it. All right, so there's two types here. One is the horizontal translation, and one is the vertical translation. And you're going to see them visually, like you see below. You'll see um, the graphs moving up, down, right here, up and down, or left and right. But then what I want you to look at is also what happened to the function. So if we just look at the horizontal translation, what you're going to see is we're either going to add or subtract a number to the x. All right. And then what you want to notice, it's actually the opposite of what you normally think. So when we're moving to the right, it's actually going to be when x is um, minus something. So, for example, if y is equal f of x minus 2, we're going to the right 2. So it's the opposite of what you normally expect. All right, so when we're moving to the left, again, it's the opposite. For example, this could be y equals f of x plus 7, and that means we're going to go left 
7. And that's because you see it's defined here if h is negative and we plug it into x minus h, it's going to turn into a positive because minus a negative turns positive. So that's something to be aware of. Okay? Now with the verticals, it's pretty straightforward. So you're going to take the entire function and we're going to add a value to it. So we're adding to the entire thing, um, the y, right? We're adding to the output. And if we're adding, we're going to go up, right? So positive means up. And then this would actually be a negative number, so this is actually y equals f of x, and then it'll turn into a minus k, and this is going to be down. So it might be a little clearer when we look at the example. So we're actually going to be given a parent function, so this is going to be our parent function for our problem, and we want to transform this thing. So we're going to create this brand new, you can think about it as a child, right? Um, this g of x based off of f of x. So we're going to think, what did I do to this 2x plus 1? So what does this minus 3 do? Well, see how we're taking away from the entire function? This means um, the graph of g of x is f of x translated, it's minus, so it's going to be down 3 units. And we know that's going down because this is affecting the entire function, right? The entire f of x. So that's how we know it's a vertical translation. All right. Um, compare that to b, and we'll come back and graph these in a moment. So if we compare that to b, we're going to graph this other child, h of x. But this time, instead of doing f of x and then take away 3 from the whole thing, I'm only taking 3 away from x. So this is a big clue that this is going to be a horizontal shift. So this one here, and I'll write it up here, um, is going to be the graph of h of x is f of x translated and then it's minus, so we normally want to think left, but remember we're doing opposites for the horizontal. So since it's a minus, it's actually going to be right 3. Okay, so now we can think about how to graph it. So I usually recommend you would graph the parent function and then graph the new function, the transformation. And make sure you're labeling everything very clearly. So I can use this y equals mx plus b format and then graph it. So let me just graph that really fast. All right, so those are my parent functions. Again, you probably want to label it so it's very clear that this is f of x. If you want to color code your work, that's something you can do too. I'm going to go ahead and graph the transformation now based on what we described as the movement. So I want to take each of these points and for a, go down three. So I can literally just take the points and count down one, two, Three. And notice how my scale is going by 0.5, so I'm being careful. I'm going two spaces each. So one, two, three. And then one, two, three. One, two, three. Right? So this is the graph of g of x. So I didn't have to come up with any brand new, like, equation or anything. I could just take the original and move it down. B is similar, right? So again, I can take that described transformation and I'm going to go to the right three. So I'm going to take every point and go right one, two, three, right? One, two, three, and so on. All right. And again, label each with the function name, so it's very clear which one's which. So those are horizontal and vertical translations. Go ahead and take a look at the next one now, on the next page, and this is called a reflection. And reflection can be reflected over either the x-axis or the y-axis. And this is one where it's not as clear when you're doing a line, and it'll be a little bit um, more easily seen when we do the absolute value. 
function next. But what you want to see is you're basically negating the function. So when we're dealing with the x-axis, what's happening is um, we are making the entire function the opposite. So you see how that negative sign is in front of f of x. So that's how we know we're flipping it across the x-axis. That means we're going to flip horizontally, right? So we're going to flip from up to down or down to up. The y-axis instead is when we have the negative with just the x, right? So this negative is with just the x. So that means we're going to flip it on the y-axis. So we're going to go from left to right or right to left. Now you might think, well, is this the opposite of what happened before? Because when we were moving on the x-axis, that was horizontal, and that was happening to just the x. And when we're going up and down, that was the vertical, what was just happening to the whole function. Um, it actually is maintaining the same pattern. So remember, when we're looking at the x-axis, um, x equaling something is a vertical line. So this is dealing with, dealing with just x, right? Um, the whole function y was a horizontal line, so you can see how if we're messing with the whole function, we're flipping across a horizontal line. So there's still that trend going, okay? So if you take a look at the example, um, it might be a little clearer when we describe what we're doing. So if you have this parent function again of f of x, this time it's 3x plus 2, we want to make g of x the negative of the entire f of x. So what does that mean? Well, that means we're going to flip it on the horizontal. We're going to flip it on the x-axis. And you can use the word reflect. If you want to sound a little bit more um, refined with that math vocabulary. Right? And I know it's across the x-axis because this negative is in front of f of x. Versus, if you look at d, this graph is going to flip across the y-axis because the negative is with the x inside the parentheses. So it's going to reflect over the uh, y-axis to make um, h of x, okay? And then we can go ahead and do the uh, transformation. So let me graph my parent functions again. Okay, so to flip this or reflect this across the x-axis, so I'm just going to highlight that to remind you where that x-axis is. What you can do is you can basically just count down to that green x-axis and then count out the same number of units going the opposite way. So for example, if I want to flip this point, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to that green axis, and then I'm going to keep going the same number of units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there's that reflection. So same thing here, counting down 1, 2, 1, 2, and then this one's below it, so I'm going to go up toward that green axis and then go up one more, and now this is g of x. Okay, same deal with d, but just a different axis, so now we're going across the y axis that I'm highlighting here in light blue, and what I want to do is count to that light blue line, so if I'm starting at the top, I'm one away, so I'm going to go one the opposite way, so I'm making a mirror image. This one is right on that y-axis so it doesn't move, and this one here on the left is going to go right one, and I want to reflect over one more. And there is h of x. Alright, so why don't you go ahead and try these four, and let's check our work. Alright, so check those descriptions, remembering again when this is that that h of x equals f of x plus 2, we're going to the opposite of what we'd expect, so we're going to the left, 2. Um, and please come back to class with questions. Thanks for hanging in there. This is a really long video.